You are welcome to Literature Hub 247, a free online literature class. This video is about an African prose titled So the Path Does Not Die. This is chapter 9 of So the Path Does Not Die, written by Pete Polis. Earlier on this platform, we review chapters 1 to 8. So you may request for the link of a previous video on this novel and it will be sent to you. You are welcome to the class. The love relationship between Fina and Kame is each free. Nothing was well for the strain they are coming together. They absorb each other and spend their non working day and night together, either in Kame's apartment or Fina's apartment. They spend weekends together traveling or socializing. Fina now focuses on completing the associate degree in business management and send money to Isa to start her own business. Kami drives her to and fro the late evening telemarketing job. He also supports her idea of establishing a business for Isa. Kami shows much love to Fina and the latter also reciprocates. He prepares delicious delicacies for Fina like West African jollof rice and goat stew. After picking Fina, they eat dinner together and then watch television, where they argue on the topic of discussion and end up making love. They are together one evening when a report on the television catches their attention. The report is about a Togolese woman granted asylum by an American court. The woman fears that her daughter will be forced to undergo female genital mutilation if she is deported. Kami comments on the report that FGM should be banned and those who force children to do it should be jailed. Fina says that Kami is making judgment about something he knows little about. Kami thinks Fina is in opposition to his submission. He asks Fina whether she is in support of FGM. Fina explains that she was just saying Kami didn't know anything about the people who practice her composition. Kami says, culture or no culture, FGM. Wrong. Fina tries to tease Kami and says he's wrong by saying FGM is wrong. The latter then asks her why she's defending FGM. Fina replies that she only doesn't want him to make decisions for women in Africa. Fina has now gone into the bedroom and minutes later comes back looking fresh. She goes straight to the kitchen and serves herself bread and mayonnaise to prepare a sandwich. Kami then steadily asks Fina why she supports FGN. In reply to Fina's response, says FGN has nothing to do with culture that is about mercy and can cause serious medical problems. Fina then asks Kami why it's not condemning the male circumcision. Kami replies that she should not compare the two. Fina says they are the same circumcision, but Kami insists that FGM is not good and should be banned. Kami agrees that he wants constitutional ban because it violates children's rights and causes medical complications. Fina then tells him to start the campaign in America. He should fight for the rights of innocent Jews and American boys forced into circumcision because of the belief of their parents that it is required by their religion and tradition. The argument continues and stops when Kami receives a call from the hospital. It resumes at the cafeteria of Memorial Hospital when Kami just performed an operation. He argues further that FGM carries a lot of risk than the maid's one. When I explain that it is how Kami puts sentiment in the argument that she doesn't like, she alleges that he respects the rights of adults in America and Europe to perform circumcision in the name of religion and freedom, while Africans are not accorded the same respect. Kami doesn't want to back out of the argument. He says that FGM kills a woman's sexuality. The man will enjoy sex, while the woman will not. The argument continues until Fina proposes that Kami should be doing something about circumcision in America and why she should do something in Syria alone. This idea allows Kami and tells Fina that they have gotten something to talk about and plan on 
he says they should leave and discuss it more. For the rest of the day, Funari asks what she will say during the discourse. She will first explain a village girl's longing to know the secrets of womanhood. She will then tell him about Timusu and Paramusu. And finally informs him that she also pass through the initiation process. When they get to Finan's house, she goes straight to her bedroom to rehearse once more how she will do her presentation. She comes out afterward and tells Carmen that she also wants that she also went through circumcision. Carmen stands up dumbfounded and different thoughts come to his mind. We don't say Carmen should ask her if she enjoys sex because of the belief that the circumcised don't enjoy it. Funa then goes back into her bedroom, where Kami joins her a few minutes later. He climbs into the bed and embraces her from the back. He tells Funa that they should not allow anything or anyone to come between them and they sleep off. Kami proposes marriage to Fina the following evening and she accepts. She believes that Kami is a tender man she will want to love forever. Later that night, Kami whispers to Fina's ear that she should let him turn on the light, that she wants to see the front. She blocks his hand moving towards the lamp and says she likes it when it's dark. During the weekend, Fina makes sure that they only meet where they will not be able to make love, so the battle of life is now part of their lovemaking rituals. Kami secretly installs a club activated lamp in his room. When Fina is already relaxed on the bed, we just clap and the light is on. Immediately this happens, Fina disappears from the bed. Kami complains that a man should be able to see his wife. Fina then responds that she's not his wife and asks whether she wants to examine her like his patient in the hospital. Kami says there is nothing wrong with it and Fina explains further that they are in their bedroom and not his operating room. Fina then condemns the installation of clappers in the room. She says sex should come naturally and should not be something to be debated on. He should allow it to happen maybe the night of their wedding. This put the matter to rest that evening. Fina receives a call the next day at work from a coordinator from Wetpan, a company that specializes in wedding planning. The caller asks the caller asks her if she has chosen a date. Fina replies that she will feed the person back in two or three days. Now at Fina's stand house that night, Fina condensed coming for planning everything himself. Kami defended himself that things most mostly if one person makes a decision and consult the other when necessary. Eventually, they agree on a July wedding and Kami proposes Fina should pack in with him immediately. He lives alone in his just completed seven bedroom home with an Olympic sized swimming pool. Fina doesn't support this and says they should wait till they get married. Kami also agrees that they will not sleep together there until he gets married. Fina then teaches him that since he said they should wait till they get married, they should also suspend every activity until their wedding night. Fina gets up, exposes her underwear to Kami and runs to her bedroom. Kami tries to chase her but eats his foot on the rug and strikes his chin into the edge of the coffee table. He feels the pain and dips into the bedroom. So that is chapter 9 of so the past does not die. If you are new on this platform, try and join us by just a click on the subscribe button and the bell icon. So that will be part of this class. And whenever any video is released, you are going to be notified. If you like this video, you are free to share it on the social media platform. Invite your friends and colleagues to join us. If you have any question or comments, just send it to the comment section and it will be attended to. Let's meet in chapter 10. Thank you. And God bless.